All right, today we are doing 9-5 nine, nine in the green book. You will need a straight edge, and you will need some type of either pencil, pen, shading device. I guess definitely still keep using your pencil. Tomorrow you will need two different colors. That's where you might <laughs> use pencil and pen or two different colored pencils. Um, the purpose of today's lesson is we've been dealing with inequalities. We've been doing them on the, the number line. Well, now we're going to learn how to graph them actually on a coordinate plane. What does that look like with two dimensions? Um, so when we're on the number line and we have something like x is less than or equal to negative 3, we start on the number line at negative 3. We create a solid dot. That really kind of becomes our boundary because that solid dot represents 3 as the possible boundary. 3 is included in the set of number solutions. And since it's less than or equal to, we go to the left. When we have a coordinate plane and we are graphing x is less than or equal to 3, we kind of graph that temporarily like the equation x is equal to 3. So when we're graphing these single variable equations, remember we make these tables. We do x and y, and we have... 3, 3, 3, and we'll do 0, 1, 2. We just choose. All we know is that x is always 3. And so I plot those points, right? And so I get 1, 2, 3, comma, 0, and 3, comma, 1, and 3, comma, 2. And then we will um, draw our line. I'm going to draw a line here. And, but what makes this different is that it's an inequality. Okay, but read that. X is less than or equal to 3. On the x-axis, where are the numbers less than 3? To the right or to the left of the line? To the left. To the left. So it would be that area that we are going to shade. And we shade the entire area. Okay, we are shading the entire area. Now, if you don't want to shade, because like if you have maybe like a, sometimes I might do something like this. I might shade like this. Okay. Or I could shade, you know, I can just do this. As long as it's clear. I need to see your boundary line. That is important. Got it? Um, now, I want you to notice. Look at the boundary line. How do you describe it? Well, I guess you don't really know how to describe it as opposed to. Let's just check out this, this boundary line, and then we'll look at the next one, and we'll compare them. Look at the equation. Look at the boundary line. Right? All right, so when we go to y is greater than negative 2, on a number line, right, we start at 2. Is it an open circle or a solid? Open. We're going to go to the right because that's where the numbers are greater than. On a coordinate plane, the y-axis goes up and down. So, again, I'm going to create my little table because it's a single variable equation x and y, what's always, what's y always going to be? Negative 2. Negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. Let's choose 0, 1, 2. And I start at negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And that's where my line goes. Only this time, I'm making it dashed. What do you think makes this dashed as opposed to the other one, which was solid? Um, yes. It's not like greater than or equal to? It's not equal to. It's that equal to, if it said equal to, it would be solid. Does that make sense? But it's not equal to, whoops. It's not equal to, so it's dashed. Now we have to make sense. Y is greater than negative 2. So on the Y axis, here is negative 2. Where are the numbers on the y-axis greater than negative 2? Above or below that? Above. Above. So that then becomes your area 
of shading. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, questions? All right, so now let's go to uh, an equation. So again, when it's greater than or less than, it's dashed. When it's greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, it's solid, a solid boundary line. So now, when we have y is less than 2 thirds x minus 1, we need to find our boundary line first. So we're going to pretend this is just an equation, right? So what is my m and what is my b? You must identify. Just like I asked you to do on the final, like I've asked you to do all year, you're going to identify Julia. M equals 2 thirds and, and B equals negative 1. Good. M is 2 thirds and B is negative 1. Now, when the other thing now, look at the sign. Is this going to be solid or dashed, Nicole? It's going to be solid. It will be solid. Now, my little... Okay, my little, okay, I'm going to just list everything. My little trick for telling, or here, let's just graph that, right? So I start where? We're starting at negative 1, and we're going to rise how much? 2, two and run 3. Up 2, right 3. Or down 2, left 3. Negative, negative, right? Down 2, left 3. And we said it's going to be solid. So I want you to record that information, solid. So remember I said um, identifying the slope, the y-intercept. Now I want you to also identify if it's solid or dashed. And then how uh, my way that I do it is I kind of ignore that x term temporarily. Now read that. Everybody, y less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, here's negative 1. Where are the numbers less than or equal to negative 1, above or below that point? Below. So that is the side that we shade. That's how I teach it. Now, so you're going to say solid, and you are going to say um, solid and shaded below. Okay, solid and shaded down. Okay, questions? Why is it shaded down again? Because temporarily, whoops, temporarily I X that out, right? Read it. Y less than negative 1. Here's negative 1 on the Y axis. This is negative 2, two negative 3. Right? Negative 4. Negative 5. This is negative 6. This is 1, 2, 3. Right? Do you understand? So where are the numbers less than this negative 1? Down. Down. So we look on the y-axis where the numbers are less than, and that is the side that we graph at. We temporarily block that out. Now, there is another way, and the book shows that, and I'm going to show you that too. You need to understand it and be able to do both, but most of your homework you can choose whatever method you like. So we said, um, now we're going to choose, this is the method that the book chooses. Choose a test point, any point. Let's choose 0, 0. That makes life, life easy. You with me? So we take that point 0, 0. It doesn't matter what point you choose. Choose a point that's easy to do the math. And you substitute it in. If this makes it a true statement, if this is a true statement, then you shade, then you shade this side. If it's a false statement, you shade the other side of the test point. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So what we're looking for is that test point to see if it's true or false. So when I simplify that, I get... 0 is less than or equal to 0 minus 1. 0 is less than or equal to negative 1. Is that a true statement or a false statement? False. So since that's false, I don't shade 
this side. I shade the other side. Does that make sense? You shade the side where it becomes true. Then it would be this side, the side that I chose my test point on. If it comes out false, you shade the, uh, the side opposite the test point. Okay? Because this came out false, right? This came out false, right? So I'm shading opposite the test point. So I shade below. Well, you can do it one of two ways, my way or this way. You have to understand how to use the test point because that might come up on a, on a standardized test. The test point, if it proves false, that means this, area, this point, zero, zero, is not the side that gets shaded if it's false. I have to shade the other side. Does that make sense? All right. So if we have... I'm going to just put this up. If we are, if it's solid and we, and it's, if it's greater than or equal to, we shade up. I don't really like this because I really kind of make sense of it. If it's solid and less than, we shade down. If it's greater than and dash, if it's greater than, it's dashed and um, shade up. If it's less than, it's dashed and shade down. Reading from the left. Does that make sense? Okay, can I move on? Yes. All right, so step one, what do we have to do? Find your M and your B. Find my M and my B. Aton, what is it? So the M would be negative one over one. And my B? Would be three. Three. Good. My M is negative one. My B is three. Okay, is this going to be solid or dashed? Okay, now, block it out. Am I shading up or down? Down, up, up. Y is greater than 3, so it would be up shading, okay? Now I've got everything I need. This is what I want you writing down, Fionn, okay? So B is 3, 1, 2, 3, and then we said it's dashed, so I'm going to go down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. Down one, right one. Or I can go here, here. Okay. Now where is, is remember, here's the, the point right here, the intercept. Y, Nicole, Y is greater than 3. From that point, where am I going to shade, above or below it? Above. Above. So everything here gets shaded. Okay, questions? So is everybody clear on what needs to be identified here? Yes. I want you identifying the M, the B, list if it's dashed or solid, up or down. So if I were going to do a test point, what point you want to choose? Let's, should we choose 0, 0? So let's choose 0, 0. The equation is y equals negative x plus 3. Uh, y is greater than, sorry, greater than. So I'm going to do 0 is greater than negative 0 plus 3. Is 0 greater than 3? No. So do you see how I don't shade that side? I shade the opposite side. Do you have to do the test point every time? No. no, but do you have to understand it? Yes. You have to be able to utilize it. I like to use, I just block it out. Oops, I block it out temporarily. Y is greater than 3. So I go to my Y intercept. Where are the numbers greater than? Here's 3, here's 4, here's 5, here's 6. Here's 2, here's 1, here's 0. 
That's m the method that I use. All right. Do you guys remember what to do when your why is not alone? Yeah. Do you want to try this one on your own? Sure. Go. Pause the recording. Try getting Y on its own, and then find your M, your B, your dash, your undash, solid, up or down, and graph. All right, let's take a look. What do I do first to get this into graphing form? How about um, Brianne? Good. All terms by 5. I like to show it like this. Divide by 5, divide by 5, divide by 5, even though my PowerPoint puts it all over one line. This keeps me from forgetting. And we get? Um, and we get y is greater than or equal to negative 4 plus x plus 2. Good. So what do I need out of this? Keep going. We need our M and B. We need our M is? And our B, two. two. Now, who can tell me, is this solid or dashed? How about everybody? Solid. Good. Now, I'm going to temporarily, we said it's solid. I want all this information written. I'm going to temporarily block this out. Tell me. Read it, everybody. Why? Which way am I shading? Up. We are shading up. Okay, so we plot our first point, which was 2, and then I'm going to go down 4, right 5, or up 4, left 5. Okay? In addition, I'm doing, uh, I'm going to make it, we said it's a solid line, so we'll go solid. And you guys agree we're, we're shading up? Yeah. Is everybody understanding that? Yeah. Okay, moving on. Try the next one. Go. Pause the recording. There was a little trick in here. So what do we need to do first, Daisy? First, we would subtract the 3x from both sides. Good. Then you would divide everything by negative 2 and get y is greater than 3 over 2x minus 4. Close. You're forgetting the rule of negative, dividing by a negative with an inequality. Did you switch? Yep. Y, so y is less than x point x minus 3. Um, y is less than negative 3 over 2x plus 8, plus 4. The problem with my method is there's nothing to tell you if it's going to work. At least a test point probably, well, no, the test point could work, and you've done it wrong, you know. So now we have to find, we know that our M is what, Daisy? Um, 3 over 2. My B is what? Negative 4. Am I... Is it solid or dashed? It's dashed. And do we shade up or down? Down below. Down. And that, therein, is where the mistake would have happened. So here it is. And we're going to shade. It's going to be a dashed line, so I'll put dashes through it. And then we're going to shade below the negative 4. Right below the negative four, the y intercept, and that's what your graph should look like. Okay, questions? All right, I'm going to skip this. Okay, if I have something like this, what do I need to do? What do I have to do? Divide all terms by 2. Good. Or I can flip it first, or I can flip it last. Divide all terms by 2. What is my M? What is my B? M is 3 over 2, and B is 0. 0. Good. You guys get that? So it's going through the origin, and I'm rising up 3, 
running two across. Rise negative three, negative two. Okay, questions? Okay, and then we're going to be graphing because it's greater than, greater than zero. All right, the next kind of problem that you might see in your homework is they ask you to determine whether the given point is a solution to the inequality. So all you really have to do is you take the equation, you substitute it in, and you see, does it work? So x is 2, negative 2 times 2 plus 3 times negative 3. Is this less than 9? So I get negative 4 minus 9 is less than 9. Yes. So is negative 13 less than 9? Yes. yes. So this is a solution because it makes the statement true. You know, basically what they're doing is they're giving us that point, 2, negative 3, and they're saying, is this a solution to the system? Yes, it's a solution. Every single point in this gray, in this red area, is a solution. So let's go back one, one more time, and let's look at this. Somebody said, do I have to label two points? Well, I mean, that's kind of silly to do, but... Because there's so many points. These are all points that will work in the solution. Does that make sense? It's better, actually, if you just label it with the inequality. Um, you could either label it with this or with this. You know, y equal, uh, is greater than, greater than 3 over 2x. Okay, questions? All right, so try the next one. Ready? Do you have to graph it when you're given a point to see if it's a solution? No, you can just plug it in, substitute it in. We don't plug in math. We substitute. Okay, so you guys try the next one. Pause the recording and let me know. Let's check our work. So as I substitute it into the equation, the inequality, I get negative 9 is less than 9. Is that a true statement? No. no, 9 is not less than 9. It's equal to 9. So this is not a point that is part of the solution. Okay, questions? All right, so now I want to try one more thing with you guys. I'm going to go. Okay, guys, I'm recording. I'm reminding you. Okay, so it says write an inequality for the graph. I think it says for the graph, for, the, for each graph. Okay, so in order to write an inequality, when given the graph, what you need to do is find all the critical features. Okay, is it going to be, is, what is my M? What is my B? You with me? Okay. So first of all, the easiest thing to do is the B. What is the B? One. It's 1. And what is the M? One. I'm, notice I go from here to here. That's rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. So my M is 1, positive 1. Now, is it going to be greater than or less than? It's going to be less than. Less than. Less than, because here's my y-intercept, so it will be less than. Is it equal to or not? No. Okay, so now I write the equation. Y is less than or equal to? Oh, it's just less than, sorry. Is less than x plus 1. 1x plus 1, but I don't need to write the 1x because it's already assumed. Okay, why don't you try the next one? Go. Pause the recording and try number, it's actually 36. All right, so what do we have for our B? What do we have for our B, Nicole? Negative 4. Negative 4. What is my M? 1. 1. Am I shading down or up? Down. So is that less than or greater than? Do I put the equal to? Yes. Yep, because it's solid. And so what would the inequality be? 
y is less than or equal to x minus 4. Perfect. Okay, so tonight I, we've already done two of those that you have to do all of them for. There's really only one tricky one. Uh, we are out. That is the end of the lesson.